and begin to awaken to a new level, to a whole new level of experience. You'll see it this way. The first thing you'll notice is a tendency to think and act spontaneously rather than on fears based on your past experiences. In other words, you begin to trust and surrender and, and to have a sense of spontaneity about your life. And you're not always focused on uh, whether it's going to work out or not going to work out and be afraid if it doesn't. And those thoughts are no longer, you're no longer wanting those thoughts to expand in your life. And then you'll notice an unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment of your life. Every moment becomes an exquisite part of your existence. And you'll find yourself, even in times when you used to think of them as boring or routine, like, oh, maybe getting in an airport and being delayed for a couple of hours, you begin to find an unmistakable ability to enjoy that, and to not judge it, and to see it for what it is, and to even be grateful for it, that you're not getting on a plane that wasn't supposed to leave at that time. You begin to see it that way. And you begin to enjoy the little things that we so take for granted. And the quiet times, and even driving back and forth to work, or you find yourself having this unmistakable new ability to enjoy every moment that you find in your life and to treat it all as a gift. It's a sign of the awakened life. You also find that the, you're developing a loss of interest in judging other people. You're off of judgment. You're moving beyond that. You understand the truth and the notion that you don't define other people with your judgments. You define yourself as someone who needs to judge. That each one of us is defined by our own thoughts and our own actions. And even those people who are behaving in ways that are antisocial and that are criminal and so on, you find yourself less judging them and more seeing them for what they are. Not saying that they shouldn't be held accountable and responsible, of course. But that judgment, that inner hostility, that inner anger toward them is replaced by a sense of wondering how could that little baby at one time who was in its mother's arms turn out this way? What created that? And I wonder if there's anything I can do to help eliminate that in other children rather than the judgment. You find a loss of interest in interpreting the actions of other people. You don't become this great interpreter for what everybody is and what everybody is doing. The awakened life beckons you to just sort of observe it, to note it. And even in your own behavior, you become less inclined to interpret it and more inclined to say that this is just an indication of where I am or where I am not at this particular moment. And with no need to analyze it, you begin to see how everything fits together rather than analyzing every little bit of life and interpreting everything for people, you try to do less of that and more of seeing how we all fit together. The awakened life means a loss of confrontation. You're no longer interested in it. It just isn't important to you. It's like having to prove yourself and make a contest out of everything. It's just no longer there for you. The real sense of the awakened life behind that is that you don't have to make anybody else wrong. <laughs> And you don't have to make yourself right. That's the real sense of awakening, when you begin to know that there's much more to life than uh, making a contest out of it. I notice that when my little boy, who's two years old, goes out to play any place, the only reason that he does it is, is for fun. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't, go to, he doesn't try to win. He doesn't try to beat anybody. He doesn't try to confront anybody. He just goes out to play. And we lose that in the name of confrontation and conflict, you begin to develop that more of that sense that inside every one of us is a little two-year-old who wants to come out and play <laughs> and doesn't have to win and doesn't have to beat anybody and doesn't have to be in conflict or confrontation. That little child inside of you begins to surface when you start awakening. You lose the ability to worry. I didn't say you lose worry. You lose the ability to worry. It, it's no longer part of you. You begin to understand the absurdity of worry. You begin to see that it makes no sense to worry about the things that you have no control over. Because if you have no control over them, it makes no sense to worry about them. And then it makes no sense to worry about the things that you do have control over. Because if you've got control over them, it makes no sense to worry about them. 
And there goes everything that you ever worried about. You either have control or you don't. And if you don't, you move on. And if you do, you take control. As you awaken, you lose that ability to just worry about things and, and instead accept them. You'll notice frequent overwhelming episodes of appreciation, <laughs> as she puts it. Frequent overwhelming episodes of appreciation. Appreciating everything, being thankful. It's one of the great ways to become awakened in your life, is to be thankful for everything and to give thanks for it. Appreciate getting on a plane and having it take off and having it land and, and uh, having a seat and having someone to serve you a drink and being able to wear clothes and everything about your life. And as you become more aware of how much you have and how much you have to be grateful for, you become less focused on scarcity and what you don't have because your mind is focused on what you do have. And when your mind is focused on what you do have, what you do have expands. You begin to develop contented feelings of connectedness with others and with nature. You begin to see that every human being that you meet any place on the planet shares being human with you and what it feels like to be human. You begin to see that there's a oneness to it all, that there's a universal mind, that you're a part of it. And you know that each one of us is connected and that on a round planet we can't choose up sides. That you begin to know that, then you treat the people that you come into contact with with the same sense of reverence that you have for yourself. Because you are, in fact, that person. It's why Jesus said on the cross when the spear was thrown into him, Forgive him, Father, for he knows not what he does. The reason he knows not what he does, he doesn't know that he's throwing a spear into himself. Because every time you hurt another human being, you hurt the generic human being. You hurt all of us. And every time you send out love, you create a sense of harmony in that being. You begin to have what she called frequent attacks of smiling. <laughs> you become more joyous, more merry, more contented as you awaken and get beyond all of this need to accumulate and perform and achieve, which is all wonderful. But when you go beyond it, you begin to develop an increased susceptibility to the love extended by others, as well as the uncontrollable urge to extend it to others. Love becomes what you are, and you can't give away what you don't have, and you can only give away what you do have. And if what you have is love, then that's what you find yourself giving away. Those are the symptoms, the signs of awakening.